Let's now talk about the concrete events in our refinement model M2. And remember, there are two kinds of uh, concrete events, old events and new events. The old events are those events that already exist in the abstract model, in this case M1. And the new events are the events that are only introduced newly into the uh, refinement model, in this case M2. We're going to talk about each category one at, uh, one at a time. Let's talk about the old events first, which already exist in our abstract model M1. And remember, we always talk about the system being treated as an abstract state machine. And if you want to simulate exactly uh, how the variables may change between the events, you can definitely do so. We have done many exercises like that. We'll do some other exercises as well for other scenario. But for now, we're okay. We should look at the guards and actions for the events. Let's recall quickly the old events that already exist in the abstract model M1. And we want to judge to see which ones of them should be refined in the current refinement model M2. We'll see. And for now, just focus on the diagram over here. For other parts, I'm going to talk about it in just a moment. And let's recall which four abstract events that actually already exist uh, in M1. The first one, let's say if a car approaches the edge between the mainland and the bridge, they want to go onto the bridge. So that'll be ML out. Right? So that means that if the event occurs, that means the driver is given some permission to really go onto the bridge and heading to the island. And when they're approaching the edge between the bridge and the island, in that case, uh, they will be entering the island. So that'll be I out in entering the island. So now the other two events will just be symmetric. So we got if a car in the island, they want to go back to the mainland. So they have to head into the bridge. So that'll be I out out. And when they're approaching to the edge between the bridge and the mainland, that will be I, uh, MLN. These are the four events that we know already exist in the abstract model M1. Now, should we refine all of them? When I say refine, should, uh, that means we may either change uh, their guards and or their actions. But we'll talk about which one to change, uh, like uh, which part to change a little bit later. But let's talk about which events should be refined. But it turns out I already gave you the answer. Because in this refinement model, we actually have introduced the two traffic lights. So that means the events that may have to do with the traffic light in the current model, they have to be refined to really cooperate with the, these two new variables. So that means we have to refine these two events, ML out and also IR out. So these are the two events that we have to refine. That's why you see that these two events over here. And how exactly do we refine them? Number one, you can see for the action part, one is A becomes A plus one. The other one is B decremented and C incremented. So these two actions stay the same as what's really defined in the abstract model M1. However, for the guards over here, we have to think a little bit more carefully. For now, let me re, uh, remind you what the abstract guard was, and then we'll try to discuss if the abstract guards are really appropriate when the traffic lights are actually in the context. That's something we want to discuss quickly. Right, so let's now talk about the abstract guard for ML out. You can look it up, I already know what they are. So the abstract guard, let me emphasize, this is the abstract guard, which may not necessarily be appropriate for the concrete guards. For the concrete guards, we have to derive them in just a moment. So the abstract guard, let me write it down, the abstract guards from M1 was no opposite traffic, C is equal to zero. And also, we want to make sure the car, uh, if the current car gets onto the bridge, the resulting A plus B will still be bounded. So that will be A plus B over here should be less than D, right? So the reason why, for the reason for why we should be strict, uh, strictly less than, uh, you will follow the same reasoning as we did earlier about how we explain this part over here. You can refer to it if you have any doubts. This was the abstract guard over here. Let me emphasize, right? Let's talk about also the abstract guard for ML uh, out. So I can talk about the concrete guard for both events at the same time. What about the abstract guard for IR out, right? For this one over here, it's kind of similar idea. So let me put it here, the abstract guard from M1. 
That one would be the opposite traffic should be uh, empty. Should be A equals zero, right? And also, there should be at least one car in the island so that the car can exit the island. So there should be B strictly larger than zero, right? Nothing's new so far. I just want to re re uh, remind you the information. And as I said before, now that we actually got the traffic lights, having these two constrained as the guard for ML and MLM, uh, sorry, ML and also IL out, may not be appropriate anymore. Let me try to explain to you why. Think about the very intention for the events. Let's try to review them over here. ML out over here is say that a car will exit the mainland getting onto the bridge. So that's more from the driver's point of view. Right? It's really about from the driver's perspective. And remember, one of the environment constraints uh, specifies that every driver is actually going to follow uh, or obey the traffic signal. That's something we are also trying to assume in this refinement model. But let's talk about ML and MLM. So I kept saying the wrong thing. Now I'll be careful. ML out and also IL out, these two. So we are basically saying that when we talk about ML out over here, it's really a driver driving their car is approaching to the edge of the uh, between the mainland and the bridge. And they're really trying to enter into the bridge. In that case, do they actually follow the traffic lights or do they actually somehow get access to these global counters A, B, and C? Think about realistically, right? The answer should be the former. They should be following tra just the traffic lights. Maybe the traffic uh, light itself should be programmed according to these conditions of the global counter. Hopefully you're following my uh, intuition over here. It's really important to see why we have to refine the guards for ML out and also IL out. Symmetrically, let me try to uh, try it again. For this particular event, IL out. So that means a, a driver driving their car is approaching the edge between the island and also the bridge. In which case, do they have to follow just a traffic light to see whether or not they can uh, proceed to the bridge? Or somehow magically, they actually got access to the global counter of A and B. They know about uh, how many cars are actually on the bridge. And also they know about uh, how many cars are actually on the island. Do they really have such information for individual driver? The answer should be no, because the driver shouldn't really be bothered by A, B, and C. These should be some kind of uh, like an internal information that should only be made available to the equipments, like a traffic lights for them to turn the signal to red to green or green to red. So for IL out, we should also modify this particular guard over here. So these guarding constraints are the global counter that should only be made visible to the traffic lights, but not really the individual driver. It's a very important conceptual clarification we have to make right now, because now we have introduced the traffic lights into the context for the refinements. So every time you actually try to do a new refinements, you have to revisit uh, the events or the variables to think about what their relationship should be. Let me just write uh, write down more uh, comments over here. So for C over here, and also for A over here, and for the B over here, and even for the D over here, the driver, individual driver, they shouldn't really know about what's the maximum number of cars that can be allowed on the bridge and also on the island. They just drive and follow the traffic lights. Similarly, for the A over here, and also the B over here. So these are all the information that should not be concerned by individual driver. Okay, so all these information, let me try to link all of them. All these. All these values should not concern, should not be a driver's concern. Instead, it should be the information that should be uh, passed onto maybe the traffic lights, right? It's a very important concept, right? So what should we do to re really revise the, uh, the guard? Well, as I said before, in the, for individual driver, all they want to do is they follow the traffic lights. Under what circumstances can a car, a driver drive their car from the mainland onto the bridge? Well, if the traffic light is actually green over here, of course, right? 
So why don't we put the concrete guards over here? So the concrete guard over here should be, I'm not gonna let you pause the video. If you have already followed through my explanation, the concrete guard should be rather straightforward. So rather than referring to just the C, A, B, D, and etc. All we gotta do is we're gonna say, this, this particular traffic lights that we introduced in the refinements is of color green. That means you can pass through. So it will be ML TL equals green. That's all we're gonna say. This will be the concrete guard for ML out. Symmetrically, what about IL out? Similar idea. A driver shouldn't be bothered by A and B. They should only follow through the traffic lights, ILTL. So they can only get through uh, onto the bridge from the island if the ILTL traffic lights is actually green. So this will be the revised guard for the concrete model, for the concrete events over here, right? And you might be wondering, so should these guards over here that used to be the abstract guard for ML out and also IL out, should they simply disappear or they are being transferred to other events? Well, that's something we'll definitely answer in just a moment. But I would like you to make sure you understand why the concrete guards for ML out and also IL out they are really forming the perspective of individual driver. So that means it's not realistic to uh, expect every individual driver to actually know about C, A, B, D, and also A, B. And you, you, you def, uh, if you have drive or you ever know people driving, they, they are not really bothered by such information. So what they should be bothered is whether or not the traffic light they are facing is really green or red. In, in the, uh, and then they will just simply obey accordingly. All right, so that's about the two events I want to talk about. And on the other hand, for ILN and also MLN. So these two events are not really concerned about the traffic lights because, for example, once the car gets onto the bridge, we assume that eventually you will definitely get into uh, the island. Assuming that uh, because before ML out can be uh, actually enabled, it is for sure the light should be green. And we know that light will be green if the capacity, it's, uh, for example, it's already... Uh, maintained. Remember these two invariants over here. We know that if the light is actually green, so that means the opposite traffic should be zero and also A plus B less than D. The capacity requirement is actually satisfied. Let's see if I miss anything uh, from these two old events, right? That's exactly what I just went through with you, right? It's really important to understand this point over here. It's unrealistic for the driver to know about A, B, and C. So that's why we have to just worry about whether or not the traffic light is actually allows you, uh, allows the individual driver to go through. Okay? Symmetrically, you'll be for IL out as well. Okay? And about the other two events, ILN and MLN, as I said before, these two events, we simply don't have to revise them because they are not really constrained by the traffic lights once the car is allowed to get through. And what if the driver disobeys the traffic light. Well, that's something we, we already covered in the earlier part. I just want to remind you because environments constraint number three assumes that every driver obeys the traffic signal.